So today I'm speaking with Miranda Daisy. Miranda is an absolute superstar for her support and advocacy in the disability sector. At 19 years old, she saw a huge gap in the performing arts industry and built Performability, an accessible performing arts centre that celebrates the joy of performance for everyone. 12 years later, Performability runs classes across Australia and is teaching other dance schools on an inclusive approach to teaching. It's so good to have you here. Now Pleasure. tell me, I think starting a business at 19 is super impressive as it is, but what motivated you so early on to focus on diversity and inclusion with your business? It honestly just happened. Um, I didn't know anyone with a disability, no friends or family, but after leaving school, I started teaching dance and singing Um, And then quickly opened my own studio, which wasn't for people with disabilities, but we had someone join us, Brody, um, and she had Down syndrome and hearing impairments, but mostly deaf. Um, She taught me my first sign language. A lot of it wasn't appropriate, but it was wonderful. (laughs) Um, And she she was just super inspiring. And I was so fascinated by the way that she learned. Um, She was more in time with the beat of the music than the other students and it was because she could feel the bass in the floor through the speakers and it just sort of sparked something in me to want to learn more Um, and then at the end of the concert that year she stole the show of course had to get the hook to get her off (laughs) her (laughs) mum um, she was so grateful because she had been turned away from other studios before who said they didn't have capacity for her and she just asked, could we please open something for more people like Brody? So that's how it started. You've obviously got a huge focus on accessibility, but for other brands or businesses out there, mm. what could they be doing to be more proactively accessible? Top tips. Um, things need to be easy to read. That's a really important thing for people that... Um, can't read for people who have intellectual disabilities but even for people that use English as a second language sometimes the things that go out there are really difficult to read um top tips on social media is for people who are blind it's really good to use capital letters at the start of each of your words within a hashtag so if the hashtag is performability it would be capital P capital A and that's because a screen reader can read that Whereas without that break, it just sounds like one confusing big word. But just making sure everything on the website is accessible so all of the images have text with them. Um, There's awesome widgets you can get that can read out your website, change the colour of them for people with dyslexia. And, yeah, and I think the images, because they can read then the words, they link those keywords or something. Um, And in terms of, yeah, taking any longer, especially with the hashtags, if you use the voice recorder, it automatically adds all the capital letters. So that's so much faster than typing them all out. Yeah, you're right. Actually, if you're designing for accessibility, you are really designing for Google because they've got robots that are searching through everything that works in exactly the same way. So there you go. It's better for the world. It's also better for you. So in terms of the rebrand work, it was recently awarded Silver at the Sydney Design Awards, which was very exciting. But more exciting than that is that they have selected to elevate it into the Australian Design Awards. Now, the Australian Design Awards represent courageous, excellent and diverse projects that are transforming Australia into the future that we collectively imagine and want to create. And I love that idea. Mm. And it made me curious Miranda, what is the future that you imagine both for performability and maybe even inclusivity in Australia? So when you are opened up to the world of accessibility, you can't stop seeing the issues everywhere, everywhere. Places that don't have wheelchair accessibility um, and not even maybe an elevator or things, but even hallways that are too skinny or places that don't have little ramps and it's a gutter that's not going to work for a wheelchair. When we had all the COVID check-in signs, they were too high. People who have dwarfism or people in a wheelchair can't reach them, like simple stuff like that, that I kind of look around now and just scan everything. (laughs) Um, (laughs) That's the thing, you've got the lens, right? You've got that lens that's geared that way. Yeah, it's so different. And I feel like we need to completely redo society. I think we just <laughs> knock everything down and rebuild it because when we don't live in a in an accessible world. Wow. Yeah, there's a lot of work to do. 
Yeah. Um, well, thank you. I've got to say I have had the great pleasure of knowing you for quite a while now. I don't know how long, but I feel like it's quite a long time. Do you know? Years, I think. Many years. Yeah. And I just feel very, very constantly inspired by the work that you're doing. You're a superstar, mm-hmm. Miranda. And, um, you know, I'm really grateful to, to have this time with you as well. So thank you. Thank you.